Bounder is um, a Python script that you can use uh, to attack um, and gain password hashes on the local network. So basically, Responder is a link local multicast name resolution, net bias name services, and multicast DNS poisoner. Has these services built into it? It requires access to the local LAN. It can't be used <clears throat> across the internet or across routers to other subnets. <clears throat> so first to install it, you would go here to the website, copy the URL to the clipboard. Now here in Cali, I like to install tools from that I download from GitHub under the opt for optional folder. See, I already have a few tools installed. So from here, I would type in git clone paste the URL Okay, so back to the website, Let's see if it has any installation instructions. Looks like it doesn't list any installation instructions, so we should just be able to run it as is. First, however, we need a Windows virtual machine to run it against. Um, I already have Kali running in a virtual machine, so here at my, this Microsoft URL, you can download various versions of Windows and Internet Explorer. These are uh, good for 90 days. You select a virtual machine, select your platform, running VirtualBox, download it. All right, so now in VirtualBox, I've already downloaded this. So let's go File, Import Appliance, select the file. Import it as is. This is going to take a couple of minutes, so bear with me. <clears throat> so while we're waiting for this to import, let's talk about responder and link local multicast name resolution and net bias um, DNS. So basically, um, if you're already familiar with DNS, you know that your computer um, has to have a way to convert the www.google.com or whatever domain name you type into your browser <coughs> or into other application into an IP address. So DNS normally does that. However, there's a lot more going on behind the scenes. Before your computer even resorts to DNS, it's going to look up in your host file and Windows and Linux and other operating systems all use a host file which you can define and add um, IP addresses to host names locally but then say for example you go to get to um, you type in backslash backslash print server but you misspell it and you actually enter pint server p-i-n-t instead of p-r-i-n-t <clears throat> or in your web browser you type in a domain name and you have a typo. Well, if DNS fails to resolve it, um, your computer will resort to link local multicast name resolution and net bias name resolution on the local network through a UDP request. So what we're going to be doing with Responder is spoofing a re listening and spoofing a reply to this. So let's start up this machine. You know what? I need to shut that down. Uh, come on. Because I forgot, I need to put it on the same network as Cali. Cali is on the NAT network, so this needs to be on the same network. Remember, this has to be on the local LAN, so in VirtualBox, 
we're going to change this to that network to match what I have for Cali. <clears throat> While that's starting up, I'm going to go in here to Responder and just type responder.py and let's see it shows us we have some options that are missing let's see let's try dash h see if it gives us some help so here are the different command line switches we're going to use dash i either an adapter at dash r dash w and then and verbose okay so now it's listening so let's switch back to our virtual machine And instead of type in print server, come on. Okay, can't access it. That should be enough. You type in and of course it can't be resolved. So let's see what happens over here in Cali. Okay, so there we go. There's a username, the domain or workstation name, and this is a in, this is a ntlm ntlaman version two hash. So what we want to do from here is copy this whole thing, including the username, and save it to a file. Now this is why it's important to have such strong passwords, is because <clears throat> we're gonna uh, crack this password hash and if you have a long complex password it makes it much more difficult if not impossible to crack so let's say for a second that we've copied this out to a file and through my VirtualBox settings I'm able to save these files to a folder that I'm sharing with the Windows 10 host So we've captured that. I'm going to stop this. Now, over here on Windows, um, to crack this password, I'm going to crack this. Instead of cracking it in Kali, I'm going to do it on the Windows 10 host because it has a CUDA compatible graphics card. So CUDA stands for Compute Unified Device Architecture. It was originally developed by NVIDIA. So what this does is it uses your GPU, your graphics processing unit. Um, if you have a compatible, a, G, a CUDA compatible GPU, it uses it for general purpose computing. And it's much more powerful than the built-in CPU of your computer for, for doing mathematical calculations required to crack password hashes. So since I've copied that hash over from Responder, and by the way, you can take one of these files instead of copying and pasting it from the screen, and you can just copy this over or copy and paste from this file. See, there's that same hash. <clears throat> I've copied this over to my Windows Virtual Machine where I've downloaded uh, the Windows version of Hashcat. Here's the file with my um, hash. 
Now Hashcat comes with all these existing commands and there's for Windows um, a shell command, com compatible shell command if you're running this on Linux or Unix. So you, I took one of these examples and I basically saved a new copy to this command because 5600 is the type you want to use to crack NTLM version 2 hashes. Bring this all into view. So this is basically going to run hashcat and it's going to use type 5600. This is the full path to the file containing the hash. This is my word list. And this is a very simple and short word list I'm using because we don't want to make this take forever. Um, but I can tell you that I have used uh, word lists that are as large as 1.5 terabytes uh, running from an external USB drive. And um, it took about 20 minutes to, pa to uh, crack the password hash I was working on. Then your output file where you want it to save that cracked password. And just pause is going to keep our command line from closing. So you would right click on this and you have to use run as administrator if you're running on Windows. Now I've already cracked this so I'll just show you a screenshot of it here. See here's it right here highlighted here's the password. That was a very simple um, example because like I said I don't want us to sit here for you know half hour or an hour waiting for Hashcat to do its business for the purpose of this presentation. And crack.txt, here we find the password that it retrieved. Obviously with a larger um, and more complex, or longer and more complex password, it's gonna take longer um, depending on the complexity and size of the password hash as well as the size of your word list. Um, here they were using a simple password and it took probably, I don't know, seven seconds or so to crack it. And then from there we can take this password and we can put it into um, SMB exec, um, a PS exec and other payloads in Metasploit and get re remote access to, the, to that computer. Or if it's got port 3389 open for uh, Microsoft remote desktop protocol, then we can remote into it that way with a password as well.